Welcome back to your live continuing coverage of the 2015 New York International Auto Show on Be Terrific. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm excited. We're here at the Jacob K. Javits Center bringing you just the best of the best, the best, the best, the best, the best, the best, the best. It's so much fun. We're having a lot of great conversations, getting some great information. Stuart Clapper from AutoLeave is here. They are the number one supplier of seat belts and airbags in the United States of America. And in addition, they do a great job with their amazing night vision systems. And you know, that's what I'm most excited about because you know seat belts, they're old hat. They haven't changed much in my mind. We're gonna find out, maybe they have, but they haven't changed much in my mind since like 2000, 2000 and whatever. Uh, airbags, well, they've gotten a lot better and they're everywhere, right? Curtains and knees and heads and everything, right? But even back seats, but night vision to me is where it's at because if you have night vision, maybe you don't even need the airbags or the seat belts. Stuart, thanks for joining us. You've been in, involved you, in night vision since the beginning of I don't want to say the beginning of night vision, but this is the beginning of implementing it into cars. That's correct. I was responsible for the night vision that was first introduced on a Cadillac on a model year 2000 DeVille. And here we are again, 15 years later on the new CT6. I was so excited when that was introduced. I was looking for it everywhere. It was instead of having the Cadillac logo, it was a, like a black disc in the middle of the grill. Um, and I just thought that was the future. And it's taken kind of a long time to get to the point where it, we're starting to see this more and more and, and actually be a trend. Um, I've gotten to use it now. It, it took me a long time. It wasn't a Cadillac that I got to use it in. And I, I really see this as a great tool for drivers. How many times are you on a dark road and you can't see? How many times uh, is it terrible weather out and you can't see? And a glance to a night vision could save your life and other people's lives. Tell me about the new night vision systems. Well, this is our third generation night vision system, now offered on the Cadillac CT6. And it's, it's a beautiful system because it's so much better than the first system that was introduced by Cadillac. Even though that was very innovative at the time, now we've added great capability. We can see now about three or four times further than the headlights. How, as you far, can. Are we, how far are we seeing now? So, so usually around three, three to 400 yards on the road. Three to 400 yards. That's correct. That's an entire football field. Yeah, it's, okay. it's even larger, longer. It's like three football fields. Okay. Oh, right, no, you're right. Three to four football fields. That's right. Oh, wow, I see, I thought 300 feet. But, but in the original system, you know, what you could do is just see an image. But right. today, our system adds so many more benefits. You can now be, uh, detect pedestrians as they come into your field of view and give you an alert to let you know that there's a pedestrian that you could potentially hit. And you also have the ability to see animals. As you know, there's probably 1.1 million deer vehicle accidents every year in the U.S. and that causes about $3.5 billion in damage. And with the night vision now, you can get an alert, let you know that there is an animal on the road ahead of you and slow the vehicle down and stop it if you have to or just pass the left or right. And, and it, it might not be an animal, it could be a, a car that stopped, it could be a person. Uh, it, it, there's so many other things you can detect, right? Sure, I mean, you know, at times it, it's tough, difficult to see which way the road is turning. So being able to see the road edges very clearly in the display is, is a great Do, benefit Does this help well. in snow or fog? Sure, in fog, uh, in most fog conditions, you can see much further than you can looking through the windshield with your own eyes. So sometimes it's anywhere from two to three or even five times further than you can see through the windshield with your own okay. eyes. We, we, we've added backup cameras. We've added Bluetooth because we don't want people using, uh, even thinking about using their cell phones. We've added all sorts of sta safety features we now call standard, including tire pressure monitors. Why can we not make night vision standard? I feel like this is one of the biggest safety innovations in probably the last 20 years. If we could get people to put it in their cars, use it, and, and be, maybe even be trained a little bit on how to use it. Because I, I do think that the people, some of the people I know who have it are a little, I don't want to say skeptical to use it, they're a little afraid of it. And I think that there's nothing to be afraid of, but if we could get people it in everybody's hands and we could then train people, eh, maybe a little training video, we could really get this widely adopted and it would be such an important safety feature in all cars. 
I'm well, sure you guys would like nothing better, right? <laughs> certainly we agree. And you got, you got to remember, it started from defense technology, and it was yeah. very expensive in the beginning. And, and over the years, we've been able to bring the price of the technology down to where it is becoming much more affordable and will someday find their way into mid, mid-level cars. Is this infrared, is it detecting heat, or is it a combination of different technologies? It's uh, detecting very small temperature differences, so small heat or co cool cooling kind of temperatures in the scene. So if it's hotter or colder, it doesn't really matter. As long as there's a slight difference, and I'm talking about a tenth of a degree difference, you can start to see really? uh, images based on the on the slight differences That's in the amazing. scene. That's amazing. And, and, and it, it's amazing though, it knows, like you can see a deer, or you could see a tree, or you could see lines in the road, like you said, it, you wouldn't think there's temperature off of them, but they're, I mean, everything emits temperature. That, that, that's absolutely true, and it paints a nice black and white TV-like image of what the scene looks like on the road. And then we have something in the car that's called an ECU, or electronic control unit, that acts like the brains of the system. It's looking for patterns, it's looking for heads, arms, limbs, it's looking for bodies of animals, and with that information, it's able to detect whether it's an animal or a pedestrian or, or maybe a vehicle on the road, uh, and can alert the driver uh, based on the fact that you're moving in a certain direction on a certain path, and you may hit that animal or pedestrian that's I, on the road. I, I love this. This is this is great, great technology. We just need it in. I mean, I like Cadillac a lot. I'd love to have a CT6, but I'd like to have this even more widespread. I can tell you, Michael, it's coming. It's just a, good. Just, just it, be, it be should a little be. patient as you're going to see it. Oh, elsewhere. I don't know if I can but, because this is about safety. We need yeah. it. I, yeah, I was in do. Wisconsin years ago. I remember we were, I was covering a rally race for Rally America, and I had a two-hour drive from Houghton back to where I was staying in, uh, in uh, Spread Eagle, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was in the Upper Peninsula, Michigan, Wisconsin area. They're kind of bore each other. The Spread Eagle's right next to Iron Mountain. And it's a two-hour drive back, and you can't see anything. The mm -hmm. roads are so dark, and you're like literally driving 65 or 70 what the speed limit is on these one lane in each direction road there's nobody out and there's a ditch on this side a ditch on that side and you're literally the passenger whoever's the passenger is looking for deer and going deer mm -hmm. and and then you know they're getting tired and kind of nodding off and waking up and then you'd see a deer and you'd, you'd be alert for 10 minutes in, in the passenger seat whether i was in the passenger seat or somebody else like you know we we rotated throughout the week but it was the scariest thing in the world because you don't i mean we're in like this little tiny rental car and mm -hmm. you don't want to hit a deer at 70 miles an hour and and or anything yeah. uh, especially without braking first and and it's just so it's not only that there are so many scenarios i think this is so important for and i think that backup cameras are important i think that lane departure warning systems tire pressure monitors they're all important but this is something i see as really important and can really help prevent a lot of accidents. So I am glad that it, you guys are doing this and innovating and continuing to make it better. A tenth of a degree is so important. Yeah, there's there's something like 27, 28,000 people get injured every year in the U.S. alone uh, based on the fact that they hit a deer at night. Right. And we really think that this technology is going to make that number come down quite a bit. And that's our goal, our mission in life. Being an automotive safety company, we are trying to to reduce accidents as much as possible, and we're going to we're going to save something like 20, 30,000 lives this year alone with our safety technology. That's excellent. And then, and then we hope to 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 uh, avoid something like 10 times as many accidents as well. So I think the American public first became aware of uh, night vision with the Predator movie. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not like that. This is a much clearer signal, clear image. Uh, you can literally glance down, see it, glance back up at the road, uh, and and get the get what you're looking at. It's it's like you said, it's like looking at a black and white TV. It's clear, like it, you know, it, it maybe a black and white TV in the early '80s that was clear instead of a you know '50s signal, mm -hmm. right? Um, what about seatbelts? So let's say I don't have the night vision and I get into an accident. Tell me about seatbelt seatbelt technology because I don't in my mind, and maybe this is good because it happens under the hood, so to speak, mm -hmm. I don't think seatbelts have changed since at least the 
early 2000s. No, actually, they, they really have evolved over the years, and the fact is our seat belts do a much better job of preventing the, 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 the occupant of the vehicle from actually getting injured from the seat belts alone. Yeah. It, it's, it's a lot better at uh, keeping the, the driver securely in place to predicting when you're going to have an accident and to, to, to bring the, the belts in securely to hold the, 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 the occupant of the vehicle, the driver or the, or the occupants of the vehicle, very safely to, to make the accident as soft as possible. So I noticed that they really do grab very quickly uh, when you stop short, um, and, and I guess if this is what you're talking, part of what you're talking about, and that's good, and it's really the, the seatbelt is the first step in the, in the restraint of a system and the, and the accident, uh, I don't want to say prevention, because it's not a preventive at, at this point, but uh, the damage prevention uh, to human uh, life. So what about uh, the, the airbags? You guys do airbags. Yes. We're talking curtains uh, in the steering wheel, of course, in the, in the dashboard, of course, the but we're talking knee curtains, bolsters. knee, we're talking even back seats now. That's right. Our company has been a big innovator of all the new technology, new seat belts that come into cars. There's something like 18 different airbags that are in vehicles today, and, uh, and you can get a variety of them that help mitigate, again, the accident. There's a point where you're going to have an accident. It's, it's what we call the point of no return. And at that point, you want to make the accident as soft to the, uh, to the occupants of the vehicle as possible. Are we still getting uh airbag burn and are we still, I mean look, if you ask me if I trade my life for airbag burn, no, I'll take airbag burn mm -hmm. but are, uh, and, and I'll take a broken nose mm -hmm. and, and some banged up uh, teeth uh, over not being here or being in a serious, or being in a more serious condition, but are we still seeing airbag burn or have we figured out a way to get rid of we, some of these things? It's all about the timing and, and how much, how fast you ignite the, the bag. For sure. And our company has done an excellent job of trying to to time the, the explosion of the bag and to make it as soft as possible and then again release the bag it, so that the, the occupant of the vehicle doesn't really feel it so much. It, well, I was going to say, it's, it's also about the trajectory too where the right. original airbags can pop right out. Now these kind of, uh, they kind of go like that. That's correct. Is, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Yeah. And, and they really are helpful, especially in, you know when you have side curtains and uh, all this stuff. They're very helpful in side impacts, hitting heads against windows. Um, and all these other things. With knees, uh, uh, were we getting a lot of broken knees? I mean, Absolutely. legs and stuff, legs obviously. And, legs get and broken this is preventative to, to yeah. not only the knees, but to the rest of the leg getting damaged. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why we put these bolsters and put them in the, we put them actually in the seat belts themselves. So you Airbags about, and seat belts? You could talk about the, uh, the, the belts uh, not being innovative these days, but they are. You can actually uh, have the airbags come out of the belts and, and also help uh, mitigate the crash as well. Wow. Now, now that's innovative. You guys have airbags and seatbelts? That's right. How do I get those installed in my car? <laughs> I, I mean, that's the only thing is like, you guys are a great company, but you don't sell directly to the consumer, you sell to the manufacturers. So how would I get that installed in my car? Well, I got to find a car company that has them. That's right. There, and there are many car companies that are now bringing this technology into vehicles. Are they comfortable seatbelts? I imagine this oh, big yes. fluffy thing that they used to have in like some of these convertibles that no, people would no, wrap around their seatbelt. They don't feel too much different than what your normal really? seatbelts are So today. I might even have it and have no idea. You, it's possible. What you kinds of cars it. are we talking about? Well, we you know, generally start with luxury cars. Sure, so like is a, a Benz have one? Uh, or a Beamer uh, yeah. or a Cadillac? I mean, yeah, some of those luxury vehicles really? actually do. I got to find out which. <laughs> But so, I don't want to put it to the test. That's the only thing. Like yes, I, I would rather watch a crash test dummy doing. So that's where our, com you know, our company is yeah. really pushing heavily into what we call active safety. Okay. So we talked about the safety of beyond the point of return, where you really don't have much choice. You're going to have that accident. Now we're trying to avoid the accident from happening. So things like night vision. We have vision cameras we put in cars as well that look for objects on the road during the daytime sure. and prevent you from hitting them crashing into the back end of a vehicle in the daytime. We also have radar systems that are put both in your, in your blind spot, in the rear of your vehicle, and also in the front of your vehicle. And all those are, you think of it as like a safety cocoon, where you got 
all these cameras and radars watching your, your, your vehicle and reacting a lot faster than you can as a driver to bring the vehicle to a stop and provide alerts to the, to the driver so that you, you really can drive comfortably and avoid accidents. As one of our viewers, Ben, said, I, I, you guys have thought of everything else, so when are we getting force fields? I want a force field or a bubble <laughs> around my car. Well, as you know, everybody's moving toward uh, autonomous vehicles. I our love that idea. I talk our, about this all the time. Our, our company is investing very heavily in that area, okay. and we're really moving, we're going to be one of the, the true leaders in this area. Uh, Thinking about our DNA as a safety company, that's where we're headed. I just want you to know, when you're ready to test them, I'm your guy. Okay. I, I literally, all I talk about is how much more productive I could be if the car drove itself. And I love driving. I'm not saying I never want to drive again. Yes. I don't need to sit in traffic in New York for two hours to get home 12 miles. I could just be like, da 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 da, -da. I could do a show from the back seat. And, and, and the interesting thing about yeah. it is it's evolving over time. Think about when first Adap adaptive cruise control came out. Sure. It was like you take your feet off. Now you're taking your hands off the wheel. You can actually drive down the road, take your hands off for a few seconds, you know, and then if the vehicle needs your hands back on the on the steering wheel, it asks you to put them back on. And then I'd be like, hold on, let me put the sandwich and the drink down. And let me put my uh, let me put my laptop down and my phone. Oh, now I'm back to driving. And then when we get to the 2020 time yeah. frame, we're going to get to the point where it'll be eyes off. You'll be able to do 2020. That's that's the time. Are you telling me it's 2020? That's not very long. Yeah. That's five years. I can yeah. wait that long. That's where we talk about very highly automated driving. It may not fully auto autonomous at that time, but at least we're getting to the point where it's highly automated. I love that, and Stuart. I love. That. I'm going to hold you to it. I'm going to have you back here in five years, and okay. and you're going to take me for a ride where I'm going to literally be uh, on my I, phone the whole time. I'd be happy to let you do it. I love it. And then beyond that, oh, think we're going to get George we, Jetson on yeah. us, are we? Beyond that, now it's mind off. That's where you want to go. That's yeah. where you sit in a very comfortable, relaxed atmosphere, driving to work, you're, you're taking care of, you're using your uh, laptop, you're, you're on your phone, you're doing everything you want in the car, just taking you there very comfortably. I like could spend more vehicle. time with my wife Jill and my son Jack if I could get my work done in the car. That's right. Yeah. So that's where we're headed, and our love company it. is really uh, hoping to be a, play a major part in that area. In you, the well, you guys already are. You're doing a great job. I, I love it, and I appreciate it. Auto la, live, la, live, auto leave. Auto leave. Thank you so okay. much, Stuart. Thank you're you, Michael. awesome. It's my pleasure. I appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you next time. I look forward to having you back on. We got to stay in touch in the meantime, and we got to get updates and stuff. We do Absolutely. a daily live show. We got a lot of great stuff happening with Be Terrific. Yeah. We do positive live and non-live original programming, looking to inspire our audience through storytelling in tech, business, sports, and entertainment. Before I let you go, I got one more question for you. How'd you get into the business? How'd you get into cars? Have you always been a car guy? I've always, you know, I, when I grew up, I, well, I loved cars and I loved cameras. And look what I'm doing today. I'm you're putting, you're putting cameras, cameras in, in cars. cars. It's just a beautiful dream that came true. So. Wow. How'd you get into the business? I, I was an engineer, started as an Where'd engineer. Where'd you go to school? Went to UCLA, uh, started my career. The Bruins. Uh, Bruins, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, I was a big Bruin fan, of course, still. Them. Awesome. And uh, and then started working at Hughes Aircraft Company. They were eventually bought by General Motors, and that's how I really got wow. into it. Wow. That chance must have been an amazing place to work. Hughes Aircraft Company started by Howard Hughes. That's right. Yeah. And uh, it was. There was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, good vibes in the building. And, 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 the, and the PhDs I used to work with were just phenomenal. I so could imagine. It was a great place to start a career. Very cool. Well, that's Stuart. I'm Michael, and this is Be Terrific, your live continuing coverage of the 2015 New York International Auto Show here in New York City at the Jacob K. Javits Center. You're watching Be Terrific. Thank you so much. We'll be back with a whole lot more right after this. We're going to take a quick break, so enjoy the content you're about to get or the commercials. We've got to pay the bills. And uh, don't forget, reach us on Twitter at Be Terrific TV, on Instagram at Be Terrific TV. Email us, connect at BeTerrific.com, and of course, Join our IRC chat. It is beterrific.com slash live. Scroll down under the live video player. You'll see an IRC chat. Communicate with us in real time and our other viewers. Make comments, ask questions. We'll share them on air. Don't forget, we've got a live daily show. The Michael Arts' show, hey, that's me. 4 to 5 p.m. daily, Eastern time. So you don't want to miss that. We start that again next Monday because we're here the rest of the week. And the auto show is April 3rd to the 12th, open to the public. We're here today and tomorrow doing the live broadcast. From here, your live continuing wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We'll be back with a whole lot more right after this. You make Be Terrific special, so don't go anywhere.